Right, this is a continuation of pilot interview one. Um, it's part two of that, uh, where I am talking to a qualified registered nurse who works on an orthopaedic ward, which does elective and trauma surgery. And my MSc research involved um, looking at the culture of the ward and how it influences the care of the elderly confused patient following hip surgery. And um, many problems have been identified over, the, over quite a few studies done by other people. Um, I'm taking an ethnographic approach. Uh, it's a qualitative approach to um, examining this uh, particular problem of how to handle patients who become acutely confused following an operation. Uh, it's often the case in, in a busy environment, not the easiest of things to do. So, um, having worked on in such an area myself, I'm fully aware of the issues that are emerging. <coughs> and hopefully this, at the end of all these interviews and themes and different things that emerge, um, we might be able to see a way forward for the future to dealing with this issue <coughs> for both the staff and of course the patient. So here we go, this is um, an interview carried uh, out in the person's home, an informal interview in which I participate as well without really influencing too much the um, nurse involved and who's participating in this um, study. So. Okay. Um, this is a reflective period here. Um, so, uh, so you've got the organisation, you've got um, the medication, all those sort of areas to look at assessment. Um, well, they involved in family as well a bit more. Yeah, um, yeah. Th there's nobody knows their, their family members more than the family. So right. maybe you could sit down one day and just ask, you know, what were they normally like? Have they ever had this That's kind very of important, yeah. confusional state before? Have you noticed that it's been a regular office? Because it could be an underlying cause, as in, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's right. or Parkinson's yeah. or anything. Uh, which is where uh, our particular, we've got a, a really good staff grade doctor on the ward who deals in specifically elderly care, who can then probably be informed um, and maybe look at medication or yeah. look into that this could be early stages of a particular illness. That's right, yeah. But discussing with the family is important because, again, it's communication. It's yeah. keeping... It's getting a bit of geography, if you like, isn't it? Right, right, right. Sure. You know, that's how it works, sure. Yeah. Um, so involved in them as well and just explaining to them whether they've suddenly just become slightly confused. Yeah. And just basically educating the family as well bringing everyone into it, yeah. a whole uh, multidisciplinary team plus the family. Sure, and we've got a pre-planning meeting as well we hold on a pre-discharge meeting rather on a Monday afternoon, which um, a staff is, which I've done on many occasions, sit down with this particular doctor, um, an occupational therapist, physiotherapist, right. yeah. um, social worker, and um, Alison Mallison, who's the, is yeah. the kind of coordinator. Bed coordinator, kind of person, and um, simply goes through everybody in the in the particular ward and goes through the individual cases. Maybe then that can be brought up as well. Yeah. I, you know, the, from the of view, yeah, yeah. I've discovered that this patient is more confused at a certain time of day. Um, what they're acting like, whether it's challenging behaviour or withdrawal within themselves. That's right, because they often get depressed as well, don't they? Sort of that kind of thing as well. So yeah. that would be I just, where possibly you could identify it more. And have the time because yeah. again, it's time yeah. restrictions that you get. Yeah. You need to get your workload done in a particular time scale. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on to get this pressure. workload done. Yeah, sure. Um, um, this is where your staff, as I said, is so vital in your. That's right. To in include your, them. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and they are well, uh, very well educated, especially with their MVQs that they're all doing now. They've really got the knowledge behind the practice right, yeah. to be able to identify adequately yeah. why a particular person. Um, and I said, then it's up to the individual staff on duty then to either document it so that the, the nurse
this, coming on duty after who can deal with it. Yeah. Because as I said, it's time restrictions again on the morning shift. You're lucky yeah. whether you could get your breaks let alone. That's right, yeah. And there are priorities, you like things like um, doing the ops or... Yeah. You know, things like that have got to be done. Cause it's, it's, um, it's not an ideal setting because all the orders we were discussing yeah. about the surgical side of things. It's a fast moving environment, isn't it? Absolutely. People going over to theatre, people coming back from theatre, then the care that's implemented um, post op. Yeah. So, I mean, what about, um, in a way, sort of starting rehabilitation perhaps a bit sooner? Yeah, maybe that's right. Including that in with it rather than just like the learn to mobilise and and whatever and all that sort of thing, getting them off the catheters, you know, looking at that as well at a very early stage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there's a lot, a lot of hospital-induced infections um, that contribute to it a lot, like the immobility in bed as well, as the, you know, the introduction of, you know, the introduction of uh, bacteria with UTIs or chest infections are common as well. Yeah. But that could set them back. That's right, being set back. Then they're on powerful medication, then anti IV antibiotics, yeah. then to get rid that of That interferes with all their bodily functions, yeah, doesn't it, quite yeah. often? And they've had a lot of drugs pumped through them as it is. And also with the social side, if somebody is um, is waiting to go home, but for some reason care needs to be implemented with social services, the longer they stay in an acute setting, I think mm. the worse they do get, and they will go downhill mentally. Um, a depression, I find, is very common in the elderly. Yeah. A lot of elderly are on And they're not all. Um, Overactive, I mean, some will just go into withdraw, don't yeah, they? Yeah, so there's varying types of behaviour which is like due to education and maybe the help of a link list on the ward, maybe I think yeah. to identify. Because we've got an expanding elderly population, haven't we? We're going to get more of this um, coming it's along. It's longer um, because of the healthcare that's around, uh, because uh, because of the improved sanitation and all that kind of thing. You can yeah. go back to, to well, like yeah. it was years ago, so people will live well into the 90s. Yeah. And probably in the future, so it's a problem. Better. That's not going to go away. And so in fact, it's going to increase, which is why it's adding, just as you do with um, any medical kind of care, you think this kind of care needs to be addressed as well. Yeah. With confusion. Yeah. Because you're going to get more. That's right. So it's, we ought to we'll live longer. Um, so. Yeah, so you identify it as a, a, a problem. It's going to be a lot, yeah. It's going to be one of the most major problems you're going to come across. Yeah. 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 Can you see how, how it, there's anywhere in the environment we could actually think about changing the environment more? Um, so that I know you've got all these things going on, but isn't there any way we could, you know, influence so, so that there is... The particular one that we, um, we're working on is not ideal because it's a mixed sex bay as well. You take mm. some of these elderly people who never got undressed under their husbands, let alone yeah. have all their personal care taken care of on an open ward environment for a start. And even though we try to keep their dignity as, as often as we can by drawing curtains and on the bed, etc. Yeah. Um, but you take it, there are usually actually men and women on one particular, yeah. one particular um, bay, which is, could be six. And it, it's just kind of institutionalised. Under these three bays, there's six beds in each bay. So it's quite um, institutionalised looking in any way. Yeah. But it's vital to our role as a nurse that we be able to see our patients. But to them, it's kind of mm. probably... Um, not ideal towards privacy and dignity as well. No. We've had a lot of complaints of the fact that they are mixed sex wards, and that's basically to yeah. could do with the constraints and the pressures we have to get people admitted onto the ward. So it's not always not for either. Uh, are they? We haven't got the time or the the means to kind of create these bays. No. No. So that's something that could be addressed, but that's outside our control, isn't it? That comes from outside the environment we're in, isn't it? And also another factor that some, some people do come onto the ward and they, they kind of gain this learned helplessness, as in a nurse will take over their care from from getting them out of bed because they're so used to getting into that role of yeah. help. Sometimes we do help too much. Patient becomes a patient. A patient That's becomes, it. yeah, and, and le- kind of learns this learned helplessness behaviour, which can be quite demanding, which can be interpreted wrong, as in this patient's becoming maybe confused and demanding, but it's the fact that maybe yeah. we as nurses don't allow them to to, to to get their own care really. So we're taking away their yeah, power. They're independent. And they're independent. Yeah, they they've done all their life. Yeah. Yeah, they fall into that dependency role, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Which some people can kind of misinterpret into being all they're being demanded. But it's actually yeah. contributing towards it because we're taking over all their their power and care. Not in a nasty negative way. We generally I feel as nurses are trying to help as yeah. best as we can, but sometimes a bit too much, as in we're taking yeah. away the little independence they may have when they come in, um, which they can build yeah. on at a later stage. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we need to address that problem, whereas, um, as I said, maybe at a lunchtime.
time maybe a gathering of small people, group people can reflect on this. That's right, yeah. And then, you know, so when you start addressing and identifying a particular problem, it becomes known in people's minds. And when you do become on the ward and then mm. look at a patient, then it is at the forefront of your mind and then it'll stop perhaps to you doing what you may do with yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, 
and then liaise properly with the doctor. Again, that's in an ideal situation. It doesn't always occur because when you're 12 o'clock, the ground comes. Yeah. The dinners are out as well. Oh, Everybody's yeah. on bed, pants and commodes. And Who doctors today? are doing it. You're just thinking, oh my God, <laughs> what's that? But yeah. yeah. <coughs> if not, just make sure it's documented and you communicate to your yeah. staff coming on at the latest because it's not always humanly possible to deal with everything. No, it's not. Oh, so so you're yeah. running ragged, aren't you, by the end of the day? You're knackered at the end of the day. Yeah.
you're in Kazina, I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you tell me that? in situations oh, yeah. where <laughs> I have actually thought I was um, not doing enough. Yeah. And, you go home you and I go home and I think, God, I yeah. should be stepping in here. Yeah, I know, I should have done this. I have yeah. I think, just, I think, again, you need to bring to the forefront to people's minds, well, you know, you're not just coming, and this is not any old job. This is a very important job where you are in control and, and responsible for people's yeah. well-being holistically. That's right. So you deal with their spiritual side, yeah. their physical, everything out about them. And if you feel that um, a particular person is acting appropriately or in the best interest of an individual, then I think you need to be the voice box and say, well, I'm sorry, or, you know, go to some yeah. senior. Yeah. Um, because Otherwise, you're contributing, aren't you? You're yeah, participating. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. You are in a powerful, powerful position. Yeah. And people are, uh, are more often than not complimentary towards your role. Yeah. They kind of say, oh, no, thank you for what you're doing. That can get to, to a particular people. Yeah. And I think that gives them the power then to, to be um, authoritarian mm. and yeah. influence people then. Yeah. And I come across it as a really strong counter from the board that you would naturally think twice about approaching. But that's then I right. think where you need to, personally, you need to shut down professionally. That's you need right. yeah. to take over. It's not always easy though, is oh, it? Oh God, it's so easy to say it, but to put it to practice is yeah. frightening. I know. But then you think how frightened that the person is because yeah. they have to their tongue, basically. That's right. But well, like you say, you said earlier about, um, you know, you, you want to get on, you want to be, enjoy your work, like, you know, be like... Yeah. Um, and then it's so many different um, aspects of it. You yeah. can't just, it's the same with this confusion, you can't just pinpoint one particular area. There's yeah. so many particular areas that kind of all branch off from it. That's right, yeah. So yeah. need to be addressed. It's so how would you say, say that the um, overall feeling is towards confused people? Or a lot of people would like keep their own thoughts in. But I'd say... Um, more often than not, it's pretty good. Yeah. So the odd um, couple of people who let the side down, if you put it like that, and let themselves down on the patients. But I would say, all in all, it's pretty good. People's attitudes, yeah. and the untrained staff's attitudes are, are superb. And I think sometimes they're more professional than a lot of the nurses. Yeah. But again, there's the, the pressure's are different. Yeah, they? the pressures are much different. And I think, again, it's they're adding more and more workload towards the staff nurse clinically as well as managerial. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes that's a lot to cope with. So mm. that needs to be addressed as well. So more trained. More trained staff. So take, basically just taking the pressure off one another. Maybe um, job share, job role, that kind of thing. Yeah. Where yeah. You know, one individual takes on a whole bulk of, of jobs, then they get shared out equally and compatibly yeah. to skills as well. You yeah. know, a particular person's more... Um, adequate in say communicational skills um, and then to give them jobs that that's good yeah. you know go to the so that you can actually spend time with yeah. the patient yeah. because yeah. as you say some people are naturally their communication skills aren't that good and they're quite threatening naturally yeah um, so to give people um, jobs that are involved in a lot of communication you may be in a bit of trouble yeah or they need to develop them yeah so basically it's not on in a professional um, environment if you haven't got that basic ability to naturally calm yourself down, which I've seen a lot of people of you, you as well, kind of just blow and go off it like that. Yeah, yeah. And lose their temper. Basically, that in a professional environment, I don't think that's on at all. No, but then, I mean, there's a lot of pressure, like you say, on people. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you're only human at the end of the day. And you just say, I can't take it anymore. Yeah, yeah. anything yeah. for me to say, because I haven't got the family life or the, the children or that kind of thing. Yeah. But as I said, I can imagine there's um, people with families, young kids, and everything. I'm coming into work and facing.
Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's time allows it maybe one doctor to come in and sit on it. Yeah, well. yeah. And, um, and, it's, and so you, we all know we're all going down the track of care in that way. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's on yeah. basically the same level. So we're all implementing basically the same kind of care and not different variations. You know, obviously you have to variate mm. it according to the individual, but so it's basically we're on the same track as one another and the same thinking. Yeah. Or maybe changing a few attitudes as well. I mean, is it like fitting the philosophy to the ward or the ward to the philosophy? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you talk about, you've been talking about how little it's Because that's a philosophy, isn't it? Care. Yeah, but it's philosophy that's been taught for decades now, isn't it? Yeah, you know, taught, yeah. That's our... But re- having it realised is just yeah, a thing. Yeah, it's the theory into the practice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's okay having the theory behind things, but practically it may not be able to be implemented. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's loads. And you're sitting with such a big ward. Yeah. Patients, we've got minimal staff. Yeah. Very unsafely staffed. And doctor-wise, it's not... <laughs> so basically, it's not a good foundation to build on. I thought yeah. when you all pulled together, it could be... Were you here when we had that trial where we had, when it was West and East and it was supposed to be like two different areas? No, no. Yeah, that was interesting. Did it work or? Well, that was the idea of behind that was to, you know, break down the, the hugeness of the ward. Yeah. You know. But then you're still sharing one clinical room, aren't you? That's right, yeah. You're still sharing one, so you're not really yeah. two separate sides there. Yeah. And what about primary nursing? Have you got any ideas about that? Uh, would that be suitable for a orthopaedic in regards to to what well the primary nursing initiative you know where you have um, your patients and you know the name nurse the name nurse scenario to be honest no I don't think it works in practice purely because you've got such a a change of shift Um, and it's all that kind of thing and sometimes even though it's been quite good I think if you're on a late shift you've you've admitted somebody then you've seen them first thing in the morning it doesn't always work you still have days off People can say their changes and shit. It's not yeah, always yeah, practical. And people have questioned me, are you my named nurse? And to be honest, there's not that kind of, of, of um, nursing going on at the moment. Yeah. It's not practical. I yeah. I work with a number of staff and they're off the board. Yeah. It's a good idea to have as in to continue care, continuation of care in that respect. And, and maybe seeing a familiar face would, would stop a lot of confusion from occurring. As in, from mm-hmm. the unfamiliar environment, a lot of more friendly faces. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's practical in this particular time no. at the moment on the board. And what about the actual physical environment that we have patients in? You know, mm. the actual layout of the ward and all that sort of thing. You say about the mixed sex bays. Mixed sex, yeah. You know, you, you, you're, really, you're providing quite personal intricate care on a, an open ward setting with your barrier yeah. and you know, a thin, flimsy curtain. That's right. So you still hear what's going on behind the curtain. Yeah. So that's the only kind of barrier, barrier you've got for the yeah. curtain. Yeah. Which isn't. I mean, have you got any sort of ideas about how you change the ward? It's hard for me to say because I haven't got really the experience or managerial knowledge behind me enough at this stage in my career to really have anything intelligent to say about it. You've probably got yeah. a better idea than me of how you do it because I've only seen things and just qualifying for 18 months yeah. now. Yeah. So I can only see things for what they are with my limited knowledge I've got. Mm. So it's just quite hard to say, really. And in mean, idealistic ways, yeah. if you could do something, I mean, again, it's not practical. Yeah. Ideas can be yeah. around a lot of yeah. 